Good afternoon, everyone. Pastor Schmeichel here from Lamb of God Lutheran Church in Madison, Alabama, with our Tuesday afternoon video devotion. Today we're looking at the life of Elijah. Uh, this is our first lesson from this past Sunday. In uh, 1 Kings chapter 19, we see Elijah following up after the highlight of his ministry. He had an opportunity to share God's word with God's people and to show that the Lord is the only true God. You remember that amazing showdown up on Mount Carmel? The prophets of Baal on one side, Elijah on the other side, two altars, both prepared. But we're going to pray to our gods and... Whichever God lights the fire of the sacrifice, he's the one who exists. Well, you most likely know what happened. The prophets of Baal got their altar ready, but nothing happened. They prayed all day. Nothing happened. Elijah built his altar. He repaired the altar of the Lord, which tells you that it had fallen into disrepair from non-use. He got the sacrifice ready. He dug a pit, dug a trench around it, filled that trench with water, doused everything, and then prayed. And the Lord sent fire down from heaven, which consumed the sacrifice, and the wood, and the stones of the altar, and the water, and the dirt around it. The people were amazed and proclaimed the Lord, he is God. The prophets of Baal were eliminated. Elijah won a great victory. That is until he got the message from the queen the next day. that said, you killed all my prophets, Elijah. You're next. And Elijah went from the highest heights to the deepest depths. So much so that he was ready to resign. He started a journey and got as far away from that place as he could. Traveled all the way to the southern part of Judah. His ministry was taking place in the northern kingdom of Israel. Left his servant and went another day's journey into the desert, lay down under a bush and said, I've had it, Lord. I'm done. I can't go on anymore. Have you ever felt like that? felt like you were in over your head. The worst of times. And you felt like you were all alone. Well, the Lord let Elijah know that he wasn't alone in this. He strengthened him with some miraculous physical food, but also, more importantly, with the spiritual food of his words and promises. Elijah, the journey is too much. I'll be with you. Elijah received peace and comfort from that. He went on to travel down to Horeb mountain range, down to the very place where the Lord gave the Ten Commandments and set up his covenant with his people during the time of Moses. And there God revealed his love, his grace, his mercy, but also said, Elijah, I'll be with you so you get back to work. You continue doing the ministry that I've given you. And by the way, you're not by yourself. There's other believers out there. You're not alone. I'm with you. And there's others who trust in me as well. Oftentimes when we are going through the deepest, darkest places, things like what Psalm 23 talks about, right? We know the words, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, uh, those words literally, even though I walk through the deepest, darkest darkness. I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Our Lord promises that he is with us during the worst of the worst in our lives. We're never alone. Even if every person around us fails us, deserts us, betrays us, we have one who never fails. We have one who always keeps his promises. We have one who is always there. Our Lord 
and our Savior who promises, I am with you always to the very end of the age. Listen to these words from 1 Kings chapter 19. Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. When he came to Beersheba in Judah, he left his servant there while he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness. He came to a broom bush and sat down under it and prayed that he might die. I've had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life. I'm no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the bush and fell asleep. All at once an angel touched him and said, Get up and eat. He looked around, and there by his head was some bread baked over hot coals and a jar of water. He ate and drank and then lay down again. The angel of the Lord came back a second time, touched him, and said, Get up and eat, for the journey is too much for you. So he got up and ate and drank. Strengthened by that food, he traveled forty days and forty nights until he reached Horeb, the mountain of God. These are the words of our God to us today. May our Lord comfort us with his never-ending promises, those promises that tell us you're not alone. Yes, the journey is too much for you, but it's not too much for him. May God's strength and peace give us that comfort that we all need in our lives. God bless your day.